the chip completely out, Stephen. That's it. Keep going. Our children are the same as any child, whether it be in London, Birmingham, Manchester or wherever. Just because we're in a rural setting doesn't mean that the child knows how to grow things or how to cook them and they need to be taught the value of actually growing your own vegetables, knowing where your food's coming from and appreciating it. It started only about a year ago when we decided it was time to put in a growing area. So we didn't actually know where to put this growing area. There was a patch of ground on the playground and we thought, what, go some parents one weekend? We just dug it over. Well then we moved around to what used to be a um, sort of quiet garden which became a bit derelict. And that only started recently, so that's come on a long way. And then just because there were vegetables left over and there was nothing at the front of the school, we moved to the front of the school thought, why not put some beans in there and some tomatoes? In fact, it's looking pretty good. You can find any piece of ground anywhere around the school. It doesn't have to be a large piece of ground, something that's manageable, that all children learn to plant seeds, to grow them, to, to nurture them, to bring them on, to look after them. It's also good for their caring side as well. And then obviously the, the outcome of it, hopefully, is that they will take them home and cook the produce as well, or cook it within the school, so that they learn not only how to grow it, but how to cook it properly as well. Cut it down where the, where the leaf is. Can you see it above the leaf? Above the leaf. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. And then what happens is, those leaves here will just carry on growing. Well, it is organic, so we're bound to have a few bugs and holes in it, and the children obviously can go, ooh. But um, no, it's been very, very good. We've been very, very successful, having never grown anything before. Nope. Some the farm shop is our local source of, of food and every single food is labelled with where it's actually sourced which is really really beneficial so children can even just walk around and find out where the local produce is. Also they're very very helpful they have actually demonstrated how to make sausages for us before now and they are very willing for our children to go down and work with them. Can we have hen chicken breasts, please? The food is more expensive, but the fact that we are growing a lot of onions and potatoes, if we were actually cooking a meal, then we could pay a little bit more on the olive oil and the meat. Is it a local chicken? It is, yep. Yeah. So we have used it on various occasions, and it's also walking distance. Who wants that? Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Our children are always very, very responsive to people coming in from any business or anything. And certainly chefs, somebody they can work with. Some of them have met him before. I'm not sure that everyone today had met Michael before because he has been in in previous years. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Headmaster. How are you? Very well. Welcome to St Peter's. You're going to be doing some cooking with the children? Yes, it should be an enjoyable day with the pupils cooking and having a look at what they're actually growing in the well, garden. Well, it's their own food. They've been producing it. Good morning, Year 8. Good morning, Miss Beckford. Now, this morning we've got our chef, Michael Coker, who's come to work with you. And we're going to give him a challenge with some of the wonderful ingredients on this table here. A lot of you have grown this and you've picked it this morning, been out and dug it and you've cut the herbs. And some of us have already been up to the farm shop this morning to supplement it with some chicken and some other ingredients that we've bought. So, may I introduce you to our chef? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning chef. Right, at this time of year, I knew I was going to get potatoes, onions, and I love beetroot, and I knew beetroot would, well, I was hoping beetroot would be there. Also, most kids love chicken. We brought some honey, basically using all things that complement each other, and then using that with the fresh local produce I had. So I'm going to take some beetroot, some carrots, some courgettes, and we've got some really nice potatoes here. So these are new season potatoes. And we've got some herbs here. We're going to put some of the rosemary in with the root vegetables and we're going to finish it off with a little bit of organic honey. The group are a very mixed group of children. Some of them have more skills than others. Quite a few of them actually volunteer and do MasterChef within school. So they are fairly confident. They're not all as confident, but they do enjoy cooking. And I think that's part of the battle. They actually love cooking. <laughs> My makes the best. Right, so we've got our chicken breast. And then we need to take some of this fresh sage. Do you want to pass a leaf round so you can all have a smell? And I just want us to cut a few 
sage leaves. And then I just want you to loosen the skin slightly and then just push some sage in. We're just going to put that in the fridge a second. And now we're going to think about our vegetables. Take them to the sink and give them all a good scrub. And then we're going to keep all our trimmings and we're going to compost them. And then I want you just to prep your vegetables, your carrots, your new potatoes, your beetroot, your courgette, your tomatoes cut in half, a little bit of crushed garlic and the rosemary. Once you've all got there, then I'll demonstrate again how you're going to cook it. OK, no cross-contamination. Meat goes on one board, vegetables on another board. Thank you. Perfect, yes, not too small, nice and chunky. That'd be lovely. That's it, bridge claw. That's, okay. that's a good one. Bridge it like that, so then you'll be safer than cutting your fingers, OK? OK, keep going. Excellent, thank you. I think it's going really well. I think they'll be pretty fast once they start cooking. I'm going to cook the chicken, cook the vegetables, put it on the tray in the oven. Are we all cleaned up now? We take our chicken breast, we take a little bit of sea salt, because that gives it a nice texture. Some pepper. I like pepper, so I put quite a lot on. Put it in skin side down so that we get a nice crispy skin. I'm going to put my carrots in. Don't put your tomatoes in yet. Then I put my beetroot in, the onions, the courgette. I've just put it in a little bit of olive oil, yeah? A few potatoes in. Just make sure that your chicken doesn't overcook. You don't want it too brown. Oh, it's looking good. Then, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic in and some rosemary. A little bit of honey. Quick sauce, you see that now? You see the colours. So we, we want all the flavours, colours, all to blend into together. So that goes into the dish. Then just place your chicken on top. And then that, you just pop in the oven at 170, and it's going to take about half an hour to cook. Guys, take some of that salt off. We don't want it salty. I'm just, I'm just constantly moving around so like no, it doesn't burn the bottom of the pan. I'm stir frying the vegetables to uh, cook them halfway, and then they're going in the roasting dish with the chicken. They smell really good. Yes. Uh, yeah. Out it comes. Do you think that looks nice? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well done, that's looking good, isn't it? Okay, right, in the oven. Can someone just get a small knife and cut those up? I know that strawberries are available at the moment. I know most red fruits, red currants, red berries, I know are available at the moment. So, for the dessert, I just took a take on strawberries and cream, as it's Wimbledon, and turned it into eat and mess, and that was, that was the dessert done. Does anyone know what that is? Vanilla pod. Don't have those. No. Right. So that's the cream whipped. OK, Lizzie, we're going to go from the top, get to right at the bottom. Right, now I've got some strawberries and raspberries. In they go.
Then we take some meringue. Is it looking a mess yet? Yeah. berries around. And some snow on the top of it. And that is our Eton mess. Just mash a few strawberries and raspberries. That'll be lovely. That's it. Don't mash them too much, just so they're a little bit of a mess. It's no, it's going a bit more because that needs to be thicker than that. Don't mash the meringues in, just break them into large chunks. Over to you, pop in the whipped cream, stir it all in. Here it goes. How Lovely. Much are we putting in? All of it. Every bit. If you stir it with a figure of eight, Lizzie, you'll be able to turn it over so you're not mushing it up too much. So you're just folding it over gently. That's that's probably about right. Oh, that's a good one. Well it's done. That's nice and clean, that one. You made a mess of yours. There's <laughs> <laughs> a couple of berries left for you there. It's time to eat, so you can put that one over there. That looks wonderful. Is that not looking good? Yeah, I think it's looking great. You can just plate up so you can serve everybody, please. There's some spare plates there. Right, here we go, a little bit of spinach. We had to invite the rest of the group in who went shopping and looked at the vegetables this morning, because unfortunately we can't cook with 20 in a room of this size. But we are going to get a new room very, very soon. And we're going to let them taste the delights of this morning and what they saw this morning and get their opinions on it. So, it should be good. They were very willing to share their food. That's what I quite liked. They were pairing up very, very fast. Come and share my meal with me. Come and taste this. And I could hear them. What do you think of it? Have you tried that beetroot? Have you tried that shard? What they actually produced today, I thought looked fantastic. And it, it wasn't difficult. It was, we were able to do it in a good time scale. It was tasty. And they were actually eating vegetables that some of them said they didn't like. It's very good. You like that, do you? When I leave this school today, something I take away with me will be that the young person actually ate something that he didn't like before. And that, to me, is, is an achievement. When I first started teaching, I was called a cookery teacher, which is quite low market compared with the academic subjects quite down the scale. I think it's rather nice after all these years. It's just becoming much more high profile. I'm hoping that new food room, high profile teachers, new cooks in school, and we no longer mind being called cookery teachers. Imagine. 